Hey there, welcome back to Science Fiction. I'm Salim Sutterwala, and as always, I'm joined by my friend and co-host, Carl Ames. Carl, how are you? I'm doing great. What's going on, chat? And I'm, I'm right with you, uh, Cliff. Good evening. I, I I meant to play the Mega Millions before the last drawing, but I'm kind of glad I did because no one won, of course. So I got to make sure I get me a <laughs> ticket before I think the next drawing is on Friday so I can be a billionaire. I'm going to I'm going to win it and invest in sh science fiction. Oh, that uh, sounds great. Get some new graphics. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, how's it going, Cliff and Q? Thanks for joining us again. Um, yeah, that's uh, that's up to a billion. You said right? Maybe, yeah, maybe I think I, so. Maybe I, maybe I will play, but it'll probably win like in New Jersey. Someone in New Jersey will probably win or something. Yeah, that's how that, it usually I usually think. I don't think I've ever won play whenever I ever have played, it's always someone in like a different state that wins it. I don't think when's the last time someone in Illinois won it? I think it had been like one of the smaller ones. Mm -hmm. I think so. <laughs> yeah, I don't know, man. Uh hey Q, if you want to give Carl and me a million each, we'll we'll let you on the show. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's not even asking for a lot. Yeah, I mean you win that billion dollars, you're gonna be set. You can have you can have a million to, you can have you you can, you'll have a couple of million to spare. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so we have a lot to talk about. You know, we were going to talk about Ms. Uh, Ms. Marvel, but like everything exploded at Comic Con with so many updates. So we just thought we would stick to Comic Con updates and talk about all the great things that were announced with. Uh, DC Comics and also with uh, MCU. So let's let's get into this bad these uh, amazing uh, topics that we have going on today. So the first one, as we get into uh, what happened at Comic Con, we'll, we'll start off at DC. Uh, they had launched the official trailer for Sandman. Um, it, again, we talked about this briefly in one of our previous episodes. Uh, where we just kind of did a little bit of an introduction on what show is going to be on again. It's going to be on Netflix. Of um, now, now, Grant. Now, re remember when we said all of DC shows are on HBO Max, but this one, for one reason or another, is on Netflix. Um, so yeah, that we had shown or we had talked about a little bit of it. Uh, that there wasn't a trailer at that time. I don't believe. I think it was a little um, bit like a teaser. A oh, teaser it was a teaser, but yeah, this is the official trailer. So first, we'll fl play the official trailer and then give our thoughts on it. There might be a couple of uh, tidbits I wanted to also add uh, that had happened at San Diego Comic Con. <laughs> Your waking world is shaped by dreams. Dreams and nightmares that I create and which I must control. He's out there looking for me, isn't he? Can you imagine the damage he could do? Dreams disappear, then so will humanity. We could do without dreams for a while. I haven't had a decent night's sleep in ages. I'm not gonna stop until I've reshaped this world. Tell us what power of dreams you have. I thought about giving up, but I have a job to do. And I do it. Things have changed. Your eyes will tell me everything. Every thought. Every feeling. My creations do not walk amongst the living, killing mortals for pleasure. Oh, you don't think dreams can die? Let's find out. Nightmares do not belong in the waking world. Oh, it turns out I fit right in. Dream 
Indians don't fucking die. Mr. Sandman, bring me a So that was the official trailer for the Sandman. Um, there's a couple of things I want to add before we uh, get, after we get our thoughts on the trailer. There's just a couple of things that clips that uh, they had shown at Comic Con. I just wanted to describe. But uh, what are your thoughts on the official trailer? This it's interesting. It's like a dark, dark obviously show. Um, I think Con like looks like Constantine is in it. Um, yeah, I'm not. I know there's a Joanna Constantine. I don't know um, about like the character Constantine, like the male version. Oh, okay. Uh, but I, I do know that there's a like another character called Constantine. Uh, that's her last name. But then there oh, might be the other one. Okay. Um, that's the the woman with the black hair. The the, the I guess she's Caucasian, and the black hair like slicked back in a ponytail, whatever. That's that's Joanna Constantine. Oh, um, okay. Um, uh, but yeah, I, I don't think that I think you're John, Const John Constantine. Well, no, I'm yeah. gonna, I'm gonna do that. There's a relation to John Constantine. Um, I, I don't think so because they were like original, like remember, like you know, the Sandman is like separate from DC Comics, it's just made oh, by DC true. Comics. That's so, true. I mean, they're together now, like because of all of the shenanigans that DC Comics has with the crises and whatever. Um, so it's all in one pool at the moment but at the at the time um it was just like a a, a separate label from uh dc so it was like a separate universe when it came out back in the 80s um the writer of this is one of the most notable writers in comic book his, uh, industry uh, neil gaiman um i've never actually read any neil gaiman works and i know this is one is I've been putting off for so long and still haven't read it. So I don't know any personal details about how it works. I just am familiar with the art style of the book. And there's a lot of similarities of that, the art style of the book in the show. And he is working directly on the show. So that does help. And as far as I'm concerned with uh, um, how it's going to you know, look and how it's going to be, the story is going to be told and stuff because I don't know about you, but I'm pretty burnt out on Netflix net adaptations because they've, I'm not, I don't think I've watched a single Netflix adaptation that was good, um, even like tolerable. Uh, most of them were pretty bad. So if the original creator is actually directly working with Netflix and, and guiding the project in the very least, I have a little bit better hopes for what's gonna uh, what's gonna happen is coming out very soon about a week two weeks from now um but yeah i don't know a lot personally about the story i'm hoping to go in blind and just uh enjoy it for what it is yeah it's you know it's been it's like the original series have been well like stranger things has been great um but yeah i haven't heard like i've heard really bad things about resident evil um like a lot of people did not like it that i heard of so i don't know it's interesting like netflix is doing some interesting stuff they're not like i know they're they've lost like <laughs> their entire catalog essentially because all these networks and other uh places are putting their own streaming stuff on so they're like well why do we need netflix we're gonna just use our own stuff so we're not gonna sell you things anymore and netflix now is doing like I think what they're doing is like um, making stuff that's available like in other countries, like that's made for other countries. They're making it available in general anywhere. Okay, uh, it's an interesting thing that they're doing because I've noticed um, I've noticed some stuff like from like Sweden, from like Brazil, um, India like random shows that are like those like in that they're dubbed in english um and probably dubbed in english for us but 
it's interesting, like the, what they're doing. I think that's what they're doing. That just seemingly that's what it seems like they're doing. I haven't really done a lot of research on it, so maybe I'm completely wrong and I'm just talking on my rear end there. But that's what it seems like they're doing, like shows that that generally would not have been available to us that would just been available to those specific countries, not just available everywhere. Um, but yeah, it is... Uh, the, the the trailer when they played it at Comic Con, uh, there was a couple other things. So the panel screened three exclusive clips from the series, uh, like all them adaptions of the comics, most memorable moments from like the first volume, along with like explosive um, series and the trailer. So the first clip they showed, which served as a de facto cold open for the panel, uh, it inspired by like the sixth issue of the Sandman, in which uh, Dr. D, he's like evil, um, a, a character. Uh, he takes control of patrons in a diner for like a full 24 hours. So they showed a clip of that. Um, now, they don't they don't really go full of details about these clips, but it just kind of gives you an idea of the clips that they showed. A second clip they showed for episode three based on the third issue of the comic, uh, Dream a Little Dream for Me. The scene centered around Jenna Coleman, so again, jo the Coleman, Jenna Coleman's uh, Joanna uh, Constantine, the one that you mentioned, okay. who is consulted by Morpheus for her expertise in demon hunting. So Constantine performs like a, a wedding ceremony that is secretly her, uh, secretly Constantine weeding out a demon from like the bickering lovebirds. Um, so that's a scene that they show, a clip of a scene that they show. And that the third clip they feature is uh, from the star series star Tom Sturridge, that shows off his town as Morpheus. It's uh, it was like inspired by the eighth issue of the comic uh, where Death finds Morpheus feeding pigeons in the park. Uh, while Sturridge is stoic and cold as an emotionally compromised Morpheus in that scene, like he's really like, um, like I said, just very deadpan in the sense. Uh, the co-star, who is Kirby Howell Baptiste, uh, showed death uh, comparatively more fiery and active and demanding to know why her brother is basically the sad um, representation that he is. Like, they're just showing that scene, kind of playing it out. So that was interesting. They broke it down a little f further. You know, this, is, this show is essentially down my alley, so I'm definitely going to watch it. It looks very well done. Um, from the trailer, people seem to be excited about it. But like you said, you know, maybe it'll be it'll be really, it'll be like a thing where we have to wonder if Netflix next will Netflix will screw this up. But again, the creator of the comic is part of the creation and decision making, so maybe he'll save it. Um, you never know. But then again, but then again, the uh, when you go back and think about Game of Thrones, uh, like R. Martin was part of like season eight or the final season, which was like completely trash. So mm -hmm. who knows? Who knows? Maybe he just did it for the bag and let them do whatever the hell they want. Hopefully, hopefully he he didn't just do it for the bag and <laughs> and <laughs> and you know let at least then doesn't let like them completely butcher the sh the show or the comic. But we'll see. It'll be interesting there. But yeah, speaking um, of Game of Thrones, uh, even though we're not talking about it today, uh, and personally, I don't know uh, much about Game of Thrones, but I do know they have like two series that are coming out, like relative, or at least they're working on. Uh, I know they did have some stuff at Comic Con regarding that as well. Again, we're not really covering Game of Thrones today, um, but if there's something that interests you and you don't know that they are. There's another show with Jon Snow, right? Like, he's, like, the main character of that show. Um, and then there's another uh, another one that's coming out relatively soon. I don't know the name of it, but um, uh, if you're into the Game of Thrones stuff, I would suggest that you look it up if you haven't heard and you're not uh, following it. So you won't be surprised when they announce there's another uh, Game of Thrones. I think it's you're just spin-off stuff, so I'm not really 100% sure on all of that. Right, right. But any final thoughts on Sandman before we move on? Uh, nope, that's it. Uh, Alrighty, so the next 
Uh, they have a released another trailer of, of Black Adam. Uh, so the movie set again. We talked about it uh, in one of our previous episodes. It's it, it follows Black Adam, who's like an antihero. Um, I mean, he's a, obviously he's a big foe of Shazam, but uh, and in the DC comics, he eventually becomes like an antihero. It's nearly like it follows him from like nearly five thousand years after he was. Uh, kind of given these powers by an Egyptian god against Shazam, the god Shazam. Um, and now when he, that he freed from the tomb, um, he's kind of ready. He shows that he's ready to kind of give his own brand of justice to the modern world. And again, the Justice Society of America is included in this. So it's all this Hodge has Hawkman, Noah uh, Centineo as Stone, Adam Smasher, uh, Quintessa Swindell as Cyclone, Cyclone, and then Piers Brosnan as uh, Brosnan as Doctor Fate. Jeez, I keep butchering these names, so I don't know why. Uh, Piers Brosnan as Doctor Fate. So we're gonna go ahead and play the trailer really quick, and then give our thoughts on it. My powers are not a gift. <laughs> A curse. Born out of rage. Black Adam. You believe you are not worthy. But you have two parts. You can be the destroyer of this world. You can be its savior. The world needed a hero. Instead, they've got me. Uh, so that is the new trailer. Um, I mean, it looks fun. Like I said, like last time, uh, The Rock makes fun movies, and I have no doubt that this will be entertaining. Um, and it'll, it'll do really well in the box office, too, because The Rock is, uh, is a good draw. Um, I mean, that are my general thoughts on I don't have any more further thoughts because, like I said, everything we talked about the first time when we went over Black Adam, we really you know, talked in depth about that at that point. Uh, do you have any thoughts really quick? Or just more of ever? like just a, a quick uh, observation is that, you know, we uh, just casually even not just us, but just anyone uh, that reads comics or is aware of comic characters of, between Marvel and DC uh, can make comparisons like Quicksilver and the Flash and, um, you know, Superman, Batman with Moon Knight and whatever. But uh, in this case, we do have like this opportunity to see Dr. Fate. And a lot of people will make comparisons to Dr. Strange, you know, easily because of the name and also because of the powers, his magic. And I'm wondering if this is going to be uh, uh, DC's opportunity to show how different uh dr fate is going to look and and be portrayed compared to dr strange because just like you see uh which we'll talk about later with namor um you know marvel wants to have a very different background or not very but try to have a different background with namor and have his powers look visually different than aquaman so i'm wondering if like if are we going to have more stuff that makes dr fate look it's distinctly different from Doctor Strange because in the trailer, there's a scene where there's like five or six Doctor Fates holding down um, uh, Black Adam, and that's something that we have seen out of Doctor Strange. I mean, multiple, you know, ver you know, of, of copies of himself. So, like, is it gonna be basically the same thing, just with a gold helmet, or are they gonna put some effort and and make sure that his magic looks distinct from Doctor Strange? Yeah, we'll be interesting uh, what they do there. Uh, before we move on, I think uh, so. 
Uh, Plug House mentioned Will Hayden, Christian to play Nova and Game of the, uh, Guardians of the Galaxy 3. I sure as whole hell hope not. He is way too old to play Nova. I mean, maybe Sam Alexander's dad or Rich Ryder's dad. Uh, both of those characters are like high school aged. So Aiden Christensen is 41 years old. No, he should not be playing Nova. I hope not. Maybe he'll play just part of the No Corp, a character from the Nova Corp. But yeah, they, if they pay Christian Aiden to play Nova, what the hell are they doing? They better not. I, mean, I don't know. I mean, don't get me wrong. Yeah, Richard Ryder is rather young in like the uh new warriors comics but i mean he's not like an old fart by the time he's like in civil war and he's penance and all of that and uh the uh annihilation wave he's still young but you know robert downey jr then you know wasn't exactly a, a spring chicken when he became iron man and neither you know hugh jackman played the role wolverine for 20 years uh, and he still looked pretty good. Like, you know, the, 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 I mean, that's, actual, different. that's different. Yeah. Yeah. But what I'm saying, like, the actual depictions of the characters don't have to be the exact same age of the, the comic book versions of them. And correct. You, know, you can literally say Hayden Christensen's playing Nova and then say Nova's a 31 year old. Like, he doesn't have to be the, nah, the, nah, the exact suck. same comic book that version. Was and that was especially suck. if, if, as I finish, they have both Sam Alexander and Richard Ryder, because why would you have them both be around the same age? If uh, if Richard, yeah. if Richard, if Sam Alexander know. is going to be like the high school age, you wouldn't want to have Sam be like two years older. Correct. Or uh, Richard be two years older or something like R that. Richard Ryder, when he first becomes Nova, is high school age too. So I, I don't know. I, I think that would be a terrible idea. I hope not. And I guess I just really don't like Christian Aiden's too much either. So, yeah, uh, yeah, to each his own, which I can care less because I don't like I said, Star Wars. <laughs> like I said, no, I'm not only in that, I've seen him in other things. I'm just not a big fan of his. I would, I would hope not. I really hope, I personally would not hope not that they do not go with him. And that just is like a BS rumor. Um, but yeah, that's my thoughts on that. But uh, as we move on, we have the official Shazam Fury of Gods trailer. Uh, so the, this is set two years after Shazam uh, came out in 2019, um, and and the Shazam family uh, is now fully established. And Billy Batson is trying to come to terms with his newfound powers as his uh, like adult alter ego. Um, and like obviously, when he's coming in terms of living in a world with all these other great superheroes like Flash, Aquaman, Batman, there's a lot to live up to, uh, and those heroes. Um, will make a cameo in this trailer too so when we're about to watch it um and it also gives us a, a quick like look at like the sequel's antagonist as well so we'll we'll get in the trailer really quickly here uh just in case anyone hasn't seen it i'm an idiot it's showtime I don't deserve these powers, if I'm being honest. Like, what am I even contributing? Ow! There's already a superhero with a red suit with a lightning bolt on it. Aquaman is literally huge and he's so manly. And Batman is so cool. And I'm just me. I feel like a fraud. It doesn't matter. Um, anyway, the wizard gave me superpowers. And then everybody got superpowers. Where's everyone going? To fight crime? Okay. Now everyone's kind of like doing their own thing, and I'm the only one trying to keep it together. You understand I'm a pediatrician, right? Come on! Now let's get down to business. business. Listen to me, The fate of your world depends on it. The world is about us coming for you. Children stole the power of all the gods. This is very personal, Billy. Look, I might not have as much experience as you because I'm not super old like you, <laughs> but I've seen all of the Fast and the Furious movies, lady. It's all about family. Guys, that was a signal. Introducing the star of our show. His name is 
The world will not survive this. I don't know how we fight powers like this. You think I know how to fix this, dude, but I really don't. Everyone can be worthy. Let's give it a chance. Now go fight for your family. Go fight for the world. I just threw a truck at a dragon. I love my life. Yeah, so that's the trailer for Shazam Fear of Gods. Um, it looks good. I mean, like, I liked the first one, and I went into thinking the first one was going to be bad because just like all the DCU movies were not good and they were just like cons consistently just releasing crappy movie after crappy movie. Like, with the, I wasn't a big fan of Man of Steel, just mostly the last like hour of it was just like wasn't for me. Uh, Batman versus um, Batman versus Superman was awful. Don of uh, not Don of Justice, Just, the first Justice League was awful. Uh, so yeah, I, I, I was pretty much down. I mean, Wonder the first Wonder Woman was good. The second Wonder Woman sucked. But yeah, I was just basic picture painting a picture. I was very down on DC movies, and when I saw this one, oh, like this one's actually good. Wow, this is this was a fun movie. So going into the second one, I, I expect almost the same kind of tone at least. Obviously, maybe there'll be some differences, but uh, I expect I expect this movie to be good, and it looks entertaining at least from the trailer. Yeah, I guess uh, we have uh, some technical issues on YouTube because we've been playing some trailers oh. and stuff. So apologize for that if you you. Uh, we got a stream come down, but we're still going. Um, thanks, Aldo. Aldo saying we're still going on. on, on we're on uh, Facebook, Facebook and and I think on Twitch probably we're fine as well. And Twitter, yeah. If you're if you're on Twitter, Twitch, and all that, I think you should be fine. Um, but uh, if you're on YouTube, we should be coming back uh, hopefully soon. Um, but yeah, I I still have yet to watch it and uh, the first Shazam movie. And I, I promise I will watch it before uh, Black Adam comes out. And um, Carl, yeah. if you want, to also in the comments, just put down the to let them uh, like Q know that he can switch over to like uh, Twitch or whatever. Um, just so people have an idea that they can switch over to one of those places and watch. Okay, go ahead and uh, keep talking while I type that because I can't multitask like that. Right. Um, but yeah, no, I was just saying, uh, yeah, I mean, I was just saying, like, this, I expect this movie to be good uh, personally. So it should be pretty entertaining. Um, so we'll see. Oh, looks like we're back. Okay. Typing, please. Uh, anyway, um, so yeah, like we are, um, one thing I'm, I'm curious on, which I mean, I'll, I'll watch the, in the movie, but, um, Mary Marvel, is she like older than the other kids? Because when she transforms, she's literally the same look, like the same age as like, a, they don't swap actresses between her as a regular person and being a superhero where all the other kids are like little and shrimpy or whatever. And then they become like adults. Is she like an already an adult or something? No, she, they switch her character. Someone I, else plays like, her. In the trailer, like she was walking with regular clothes on, and then when she put they all said Shazam, it was the exact same person. Maybe they got I know in the first one, uh someone else played her. Like okay. when she turned into maybe maybe this one she's just our, our adult self. It could be. I don't I don't know. I, I I don't know that much in depth on on Shazam. So um, it could be, but I know in the first one, um, like I said, the first one, they all had like, 
I think they're supposed to all be the same age, like when they turn into that, like do sh 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 get the powers of Shazam. Um, but yeah, in the first movie, every one of them obviously changed into a different uh, character. So it'll be interesting. I mean, I can look in up really quick on who plays what here. Let's see here, um, Lucy Liu. So. Yeah, so we do have Lucy Liu in the film, so I didn't know that was happening. So I'm down for that because um, she's just a, a great actress, a favorite actress of mine. Um, uh, they said they were the daughters of Atlas or something like that. As I'm not familiar with uh, how that works. Again, the Shazam, Captain Marvel lore is DC stuff that I'm not personally invested in and, and knowledgeable on. Uh, I mean, again, I also haven't seen the first movie, so it'll be all relatively new to me. Um, but in general, uh, like the the uh, DC Comics, that was pretty much it for DC at uh, Comic Con, and and by that I mean like what we just showed you was their entire presence for the entire a uh, week of of comic con like they didn't have any kind of booths set up like uh if you if you've never been to a convention uh generally you know you have the the show floor where everyone has all of the stuff that they're selling and then there's the comic books there's all of the artists and the the panels and the signing and and uh like all of the autographs and pictures and photo and all that stuff uh, DC Comics was not there at San Diego Comic Con at all, except for in Hall H on Saturday to show off what we just showed you. And that is it. They were not at all, pretty much not at all there. Um, they do have like new management and that's like a thing, but it's not like um, the people that were already a part of DC didn't know that comic-con was happening so they just didn't have much going on they didn't have much to plan for and what's weird about all of this is in particular is that there was a lot of notable you know absences and just again they were practically not there uh for the convention but aquaman was original aquaman 2 was originally scheduled to come out in 2022 as well as the Flash movie was supposed to come out in 2022, and we all we've discussed before that the Flash was delayed a whole year. It's not coming back, not coming out until next year, uh, for various reasons. But one of those is definitely because of the whole drama with Ezra Miller uh, slapping everybody up in in Hawaii, uh, and then you got Amber Heard and her is issues with uh, Johnny Depp as an ongoing thing. Uh, you have to wonder if those played a part in why they didn't show up. Uh, didn't have any kind of presence. Didn't talk about them. Didn't. I think the Flash was mentioned in like one of the interviews or something like that, or referenced. But for what it's worth, they didn't talk about the movie directly. They didn't talk about what the new uh, release dates or what the status is or uh, what they plan on doing it. Are they going to replace Ezra Miller? Is it going to keep with him? Same thing with Amber Heard. And uh, the, also the last thing I checked is that both movies are finished filming. It's not like uh, they don't have footage or there's still things to do. Both of these movies are finished uh, filming CG and stuff still needs to be done, but they're done with the filming aspect of it. So where is it? Uh, they're probably avoiding any bad PR right now because of Amber Heard lost that case. And uh, obviously we've seen all the garbage stuff that Ezra Miller has been doing. So they probably were just trying not to uh, bring any negative conversation to Comic-Con and to DC. Now, that, that would be my guess. That's why like Aquaman and uh, Flash were absent. Now, Henry Cavill, that's interesting because there was a rumor that he was going to show up there, but that he didn't. So maybe that's just a rumor that happened that he might be coming back as Superman. It's not any concrete yet. Um, he's still probably not sure if he wants to. I mean, we'll see. Like, obviously, we, we talked about this in the past, too, that they want to kind of do a reboot um, of DCEU, DCEU. Who knows if they will go on with that. Um, really quick, I do want to get back to your Shazam question. So, yeah, in the first movie, 
Uh, Superhero Mary was played by Michelle Bo- Borth. Um, and then, so in this one, I guess, since she's like supposedly, because she is like older than all the, to, to answer, I didn't answer your for question when you asked, she is like the oldest of all the kids. So she's like grad at the end, in, in, in the first uh, uh, movie, it's a tiny spoiler, it's not really a big spoiler, but she's graduating high school, going into college. Um, and now she's probably what, like 22, three years old, maybe now. Uh, so they, she's an adult. So they probably just kept her as herself when she changes into superhero Mary. So yeah, they just let uh, Grace Caroline uh, Curry, who plays Mary Broomfield, um, to the, to just let her be herself as a superhero. So yeah, um, that answered that question. But but definitely the first one, someone else did play her. Um, but yeah, so going back to these no shows and and avoid i think i definitely think i'm just speculating the aquaman and the the flash stuff they just probably wanted to avoid any conversation negative conversation directed towards those topics i'm that's what i'm guessing yeah i wouldn't say i mean it's not that they yes there is there's going to be negative conversation regardless if they say something or not it's more of they had an opportunity to address the fandom and get maybe snuff out some negative conversation or just invariably quell some concerns that because now you know being more silent on projects that were supposed to have come out like a few months from now and just com- completely uh being in the dark about it is gonna cause more conversation like we're having right now um at least saying that aquaman 2 is you know just throw out a little trailer yeah it's been delayed but here's a little uh, teaser trailer to let you know what it's going to look like and and uh, give people buzzing because you want people to talk about it positively and us noticing that it's not there is is the negative conversation you know Um, maybe i mean i didn't see a lot of dialogue on on that like yeah obviously they mentioned that they were not there but i don't know I didn't. I don't know. Maybe maybe I was just more submerged in the uh, all the um, all the really cool MCU um, updates. So maybe I kind of missed. Uh, yeah, but that's the that. point. Exactly. The like Marvel had a. I wouldn't say necessarily a spectacular show, but at least they had a lot of stuff to talk about. Whereas right, DC was right. there for like two hours, showed two trailers, and then dipped out, and that's all they had. And it's like, you know, I, I saw someone say that you know not here but like that this year is like the golden age for dc movies and like all you know uh uh you know between the peacemaker and um the batman movie and harley quinn's coming back on you know hbo max and sandman like okay this is a good year and remember like last year right when they were hyping up hbo max and all of the stuff that was supposed to happen this year because they were supposed to have aquaman and the flash and i think we were saying like next year is going to be a really good year for dc and then ezra miller happened and amber heard and johnny depp happened and now that stuff is just you know swept off the table we're not talking about that right now so i don't know how great of a year dc's having they had a great first half of the year and after uh I guess, I mean, you know, Shazam comes out in a couple months and then it's going to end with um, uh, Shazam 2, which was supposed to come out next year. You know, they'll be okay, but, you know, we're about to talk about Marvel for probably the next hour and not even talk about it in great detail because there's so much stuff to cover. You know, the other thing I'll say too, DC doesn't really have a plan, right? Like, they're not like Marvel. That's the problem, yeah. Yeah. They don't have a plan. They just kind of freestyle stuff. Like, so they're focusing on these single movie stars. So there's fo- like Shazam was a great hit. For- Shazam one was a hit. So like they're focusing on Shazam two. The Rock is like amazing, right? Like he's a very very a popular actor, and Black Adam has been like a fan uh, favorite. Like of, of it's almost almost a fan service movie that they're doing because fans really wanted this movie to happen. And fans are excited about it. So, yeah, let's talk about Black Adam and, and bring that up. Um, they're not, they're not like, like I said, they're not like MCU where they're planning things out and uh, storylines and 
uh, all these things are connected because they're doing just so many random things, just random movies, random, you know, characters uh, that have no connection to each other, really. Uh, the storylines have no correct co connection to each other. So, you know, if <laughs> to be honest, like I said, like I said, I'm not sure if I just didn't really pay attention to it because I was just more submerged into the MCU side or because it, they just really didn't talk about, like, those big noticeable misses on the DC. Like, maybe some, like, passingly mentioned, but not really focused on, like, oh, why were not these guys there? What's going on? I missed that. Maybe, maybe you saw more of it because I wasn't really looking looking into it. But yeah, like I said, you know, DC, they have a lot to figure out. Maybe, and you know, maybe they should just stick to shows. Like their shows are doing great. Like Peacemaker was awesome. I thought it was really good. Uh, we've talked about the other stuff that's been good on, on on the show side. Maybe they should stick to that. And obviously, uh, maybe just keep going the route of some of these movies that are single single standing not connected to each other uh, and just kind of focus on building that up so i don't know you know what um, i forgot to mention like speaking of things that were absent uh from dc is the blue beetle movie right, they didn't have right. they didn't talk about that what at all no panels no you know because even if they didn't have footage they could have had the actors come in and just been interviewed and just talked about it show some concept art so on there's the batgirl movie as well that was supposed to come out this year um if it's coming out this year you think they'd have a trailer at comic-con if it's coming out in like october or november or something right. like that so that doesn't look good either so that's just uh, another uh thing to uh to think about Right, Q was asking, is it true that Marvel and DC are working together? Not that I've heard of. I know there was that rumor that uh, they were before, this was like five years or ten, five years ago or something like that or something, I can't remember exactly, but that they were trying to get Kevin Feige to take charge of DC and leave MCU. Um, but I don't I don't think there's anything like that happening where they're going to work together. I know there's like some, been some comics that were made where there was a crossover between DC and MCU, but that's about it. I don't think, I don't think there's any actually substance to that, that I know of. Um, but yeah, uh, let, let's get into the Marvel stuff here because we have a lot to go into for that as well. And um, first we're going to talk about X-Men 97, the first look on what they're doing there. So it was officially announced, obviously, way back in November 2021. We talked about it on our show. Uh, there was so many rumors, but it, con it continues from the 1990s animated series, and it was, it was set to debut on uh, Disney Plus sometime in 2023. Uh, so, and Marvel did release a couple of images highlighting the characters' uh, new and updated designs and costumes. Um, now, the series didn't disclose much terms of the X-Men 97 story, but it did confirm that Magneto um, sporting, again, like a more seemingly inspired by a, a design, seemingly like more inspired by uh, John Romito, a depiction of the character of John Romito that uh, I believe is a, character, a writer for X-Men storylines um, who has drawn Magneto. He's going to be leading them. So that leaves off essentially from the last episode of season five. Um, and again, so there was five seasons of that. And at the time on, it was on Fox kid. And at that time, after season four ended, that was a technically supposed to be the finale, but then they decided to do 10 more episodes uh, of that. And the ten, last final 10 episodes got a lot of mixed reactions, more negative than positive. But it looks like, an end. I think you and I had kind of wondered what they were going to do. Like, will they just say episode or season seven never happened or five never season happened? Five. Yeah, season five never happened. Or will they continue from season five, end of season five? So it looks like here that they're continuing from end of season five. Right. Yeah. So like you said, and like this Magneto leading the X-Men is out of the comics. Like if you read. Right. Uh, X Uncanny X Men number two hundred. They they have the trial of Magneto, and pretty much 
after that is when he takes over as leadership for the X-Men for a short period in his costume, uh, which I'm not sharing a picture of today, but they did share a picture of it at the, uh, at the convention uh, is what he looks like in the show is relatively how he looked like in those comic books. But the looks for the main cast of the X-Men are going to look relatively the same as they did from the, the X-Men 97. Cause it's, again, it's just picking up. Uh, right off uh, of the final episode of season five. The only notable difference I can see here is with Storm is that she has her hair in more of like a ponytail and uh, poofed up a little bit. And uh, that's it. Like the art style isn't exactly the same as the 90, you know, the 90s show, but that's because you don't have the exact same artists working on it. However, those artists that are working on the show very much understand the assignment they know what the uh, the these characters look like they're all very passionate fans of the x-men passionate fans of that show um i i don't personally know but i know who the uh the lead art director is and her art style is fantastic like even if they had her art style for the show it would look like very faithful adaptations of of uh, these characters and the jim lee versions of these uh, uh of these you know costumes and the art style of the show um with the only exception again like storm's hair is a style differently i think jeans i would say if i'm nitpicking jeans hair is more orange like a natural redhead like an orangish color and then the show is a little darker red and basically that's about it as far as just looking at this picture everything else is pretty spot on um and then they have uh, some other uh, stuff as well. Like these, this was introduced as just other characters that will appear on the show. However, there's some other differences. I mean, we've had Cable, and he's not looking any different than he did uh, from the original show. But Bishop, he's wearing the same costume, but Bishop has a haircut now. So he's not sporting a mullet like he was back in the day. Uh, he's got more of a fade going. So that's the only visual difference with, with Bishop. Um, though we do have the second character from the left is Morph. So Morph does look a lot different here than he did in the show because um, there was they were explaining that he's just basically taking more of a look that was inspired by the comic. So if you don't really know, like this morph, the character in the animated show is actually not a character in the comics, the way he was depicted. He's just, it was purely for the show and they, they were intending to kill him off in the first episode, which they kind of did. And, but he was so well perceived that they brought him back later on. Um, so Morph will return, but this look for him is more of a changeling slash um, X-Men uh, Apocalypse, you know, the Age of Apocalypse look of Morph. Uh, so he's going to look, you know, have the white skin and be bald and have that kind of look. So he won't look like his more brown hair, you know, fair skin type of Morph. He's also skinnier too. So uh, there's that. And then on the bookends of this, we have on the right is Nightcrawler, and the left is making his first appearance uh, in the series as Sunspot. And they did mention that these two would be new members of the team. They did say that specifically. So I assume that means Nightcrawler will be leaving Germany and be a permanent spot on the actual X-Men team as well as Sunspot. So I'm excited to see that. Right. Um, I want to address a comment from Muck Muck, the general. Marvel stinks. To quote the dude from Big Lebowski, yeah, well, you know, that's like uh, your opinion, man. So <laughs> you can you can stick with your opinion. That does not make it a fact. Anyways, uh, Q had a quick question. What's the difference between X-Force versus X-Men? Uh, X-Force is a group created by the uh, mutant a mutant group created by like the government no it's x factor oh that's x factor that's right x what is the difference the x force is my... literally the team so x force is first they were the new mutants so they were just a secondary team of younger mutants by led by xavier and uh you know they went through a thing but they had like magic and sunspot and just 
uh, just a small team of young, uh, young mutants learning how to use their powers. And, and eventually that's, they were the ones in, in their comics. It was where cable was introduced as an adult. And then like a few issues later, new mutants was canceled or rebranded into x-force and x-force was led by cable so it's the x-force is the team led by cable and it was all of the old new mutants and they're more of a strike force a strike a strike team sort of thing uh, and that's where you also get deadpool from as well deadpool uh made an appearance in those new mutants uh, x x-force comics um and you know, he may like he did make an appearance. Deadpool made an appearance in the original 97 or the uh, 90s uh, animated series, but it was like a cameo, a half a second, no voice lines, not really involved in the story. I think he was just like on a television, he was there. So, there's a small chance that we can actually see Deadpool in the show, the, the new version of the show, um, especially if they have Sunspot and Cable and they just fill in the gaps with more um x-force characters yeah deadpool can totally make it on this show uh but we'll see yeah so it'll be interesting um to see what happens there but moving on to the next uh topic on uh, marvel zombie sneak peek um they released some stuff on on marvel zombies it's it's from uh, this series all, it takes place in the same universe as the zombie universe that appeared in What If. Um, so yeah, sh- that it was confirmed in, in, in at Comic Con, um, and it's going to have a TV rating of, of mature. So, I mean, I feel like that gives me hope that Disney is is open to doing more mature content. Yeah, uh, or Marvel is more is open to MCU is open to do more mature content, and then maybe factors into shows like daredevil and blade and daredevil we'll talk about later but uh i'm hoping that's the case there yeah same here uh, I'm, I'm excited for that like uh, one of the things that i um uh, enjoyed the most about what if was the fact that they included the zombies and they really even though i believe the episode was still uh tv uh like pg-13 sort of thing but in that episode they were zombies they were i think they winter soldier shot one in the head and there was you know blood and stuff in that episode so it wasn't like they were uh skipping out on the violence or anything in in that so i want to see them you know, embrace it more with this uh, marvel marvel zombies uh, uh show whenever it comes out i think it's still like a year or maybe two years out so it's going to be a little bit before we actually see it yeah, and Muck Muck again, Marvel is finished. Uh, yeah, that's why the movies are like huge box office hits. You're right, man. They're finished. You're you're spot on there, buddy. Good good job. Uh anyways, uh moving on, we got She Hulk official trailer. No, no, uh, uh we got what if still. So. Oh, sorry, what if? Uh what was so sneak peek of the first episode of season two was shown to audience. Featuring Captain Carter versus Hydra and Stomper. The Hydra Stomper. That was oh. the the big captain, like this when Steve Rogers was in the big mech sort of uh thing. That was also the first episode of the first season. So it's like the what they showed was the first episode of the second season, which is basically taking like picking up right off from where we last saw Captain Carter in that ep- episode of the first season. So, uh, but yeah, they, they, they have all these designs and they're now like they can use, cause the whole premise of the, what if is that they're using all the characters that had previously appeared in the MCU, but you know, what if aired around the same time as Shang-Chi and black widow. So they didn't really have that together, but now we can have Kate Bishop and Shang-Chi and, you know, Yelena Belova and you know jimmy woo here you can see him there i believe that's katie off to the far right but i'm not 100 percent sure she was you know the the female character in the shang chi movie um and i believe that's death dealer is his name um so yeah like the all of those characters that have been in the mcu in the last year i believe eternals are also going to be a part of this as well uh for the next season and i 
is isn't it launching next year, like next summer? Uh, Shang Chi, you said? No. Uh, what if season two? Um, I believe so. Twenty twenty. I think it was announced for twenty twenty three. So, uh, you're, you're, I think you're on the on, on there for for that. Yep. Um, any final thoughts on what if? Um, no, just like I said, they'll, they'll, everything that's been in the MCU for the last year is fair game to be an episode on the next season of what if, and we don't know the full scope, like, are they going to have Ultron, uh, a comeback or have some other big bad, uh, uh, like we don't know any of that stuff yet, but, um, you know, animation style will be, be the same and, you know, continue on. Right. Um, so yeah, we have the She-Hulk official trailer, uh, the new one that they set, uh, set out. It did, it did look in the trailer that looks like they updated like the um, anim- or like the CGI uh, and made it look more like natural as opposed to like the cartoonish was looking more so in the first trailer, and then all the criticism came out. Um, but yeah, we'll we'll go ahead and. Play the trailer really quick just in case anyone hasn't seen it. <gasps> wow! Jeez, what the hell, man? Still in control, no overwhelming feelings of rage. No, a normal amount of rage. You do revert back to Gen 4 when you sleep. Is the air horn really necessary? For comedy, absolutely. <laughs> This is a multi-year journey you're about to embark on. Yes. Yeah. Who's your best friend? Nikki. Eh, spandex. Spandex is your best friend. Being a Hulk asks for balance. You have so much more to learn. Yes! So I'm clearly nailing it at all these things. If you want to go back to life as a lawyer, I, I respect that. He doesn't mean that. More and more eccentric superhumans are coming out of the woodwork. <laughs> we are going to launch a division for them. And I want the She-Hulk to be the face of it. Jennifer Waters. Namaste. I have a serious conflict of interest. This man tried to kill my cousin, Bruce. Yeah, that's quite all right. Oh. People only care because I'm representing Emil Blonsky. I think they care because they're like, hey, that girl's green. Jen, do your thing. God, I really like this outfit. I'm not proud of this. Well, does we answer to a higher power? Our universe is on the edge of a precipice. I am a lawyer. We do things by the book. Mm-hmm. The book of the shanty. No, the book of American uh, laws. Whether you like it or not, you're now a superhero. Let's do this. You know that friend you had in high school? Who was way cooler than you were, attractive, got all the attention from everyone. Hello. Mm -hmm. I think I'm jealous. Is that what I'm feeling? So that was the official trailer. Um, it looks interesting. I think my favorite part definitely was the appearance of Daredevil. Uh, I took some of those screen uh, clips of it really quick. Uh, if you look at it, they show his uh, outfit from the front and back. I think, did you get the other pick too? Yep. Um, there's some slight changes, it looks like. So they add more yellow, like a nod to the comic books, uh, with, where he has yellow in his suit. And then it also looks like the helmet is uh, like a more 
full on helmet because in the Netflix show he has like a smaller helmet that I guess Charlie Cox was like felt like the helmet was uncomfortable the one that Netflix was providing him so he wanted like a smaller helmet that he could be more comfortable in but this looks like it's a lot more like secure where it covers more of his face um but that that was more like really exciting because I've been super excited and waiting for Daredevil to make a consistent appearance back in the MCU yeah, it definitely has the yellow elements of his first comic book costume, but it's definitely a temporary thing because he didn't wear that yellow and red costume for very long in the comics. So he's this is probably just for this series, his first appearance in the MCU. He'll have his first appearance costume. So by the time we actually see him in the Daredevil series and uh, possibly in Echo, because uh, we'll see him in Echo first, um, he probably will be wearing something entirely different. Right. So it'll be interesting uh, how much, like, maybe he's only there for an episode. You don't know how long he'll be in there. Right. Yeah. Uh, maybe one or two. Right. And uh, another another aspect, uh, just to get a little more in this trailer. So she is going to be, like, essentially, obviously, a, a, a lawyer for superheroes. And there's going to be a, a bunch of random characters uh, from Marvel in this. It, it's It'll be fun to see um, all the people that kind of pop up i think you're seeing like uh scenes in the trail that show jen attending the like the superhuman support group retreat uh fans kind of theorizing it'll be like ella aguila i believe can't remember can't really not sure how to pronounce and pronouncing that correctly and then uh man bull as well um those characters are smaller on in Marvel, but yeah, the, the, it'll be interesting to see what other characters kind of pop up in this. Uh, well, the thing I, I I enjoyed and I'm I'm glad we're gonna see it is um, her breaking the fourth wall and like directly turning to the camera and speaking to the audience, talking to us, uh, which is something is not her copying Deadpool. Just want to throw it out there, um, like. Deadpool, yes, he's the first to do it in a comic book movie, but uh, the first to do it in the comic books, well, Deadpool wasn't even invented until the 90s. She-Hulk's been around since the 70s, and she's been doing it since then. So that she definitely was the reason why they did it with Deadpool. So uh, them doing that here in the show is uh, is pretty fun and interesting. I don't expect them to do that with all of the others because there's not that many other comic book uh, characters that break the fourth wall. But between her and Deadpool, uh, they're the ones that that do that. So I'm I'm hoping that they take that in, in interesting and funny ways. Right. Um, any final thoughts on that before we move on? Um, yeah, it just in, just in general, just like uh, yeah, it looks better um, uh, visually. I think her hair looks good. Uh, like I said before, I don't think it's because I don't think she looks so bad that. To say that she looked bad in the previous trailers one you have to deal with the fact that it's youtube and the compression of video makes all of the videos look bad regardless of of uh, whatever it is even if it says it's in 1080p it's still like you know not going to be all that great and then also i just think there's going to be people that don't like her because they're one she's a woman so they're, they're going to judge her differently than they're going to judge hulk uh, in general. So if they don't find her appealing, then they're just going to just say again, where that culture of it's either all good or it's all bad and no one can be in between and have and say that it's okay or very good or a little bad or what. No, it's always one or the other. And I think we're going to have a lot of reactions like that towards the show and towards her appearance uh, towards the, the visual uh, designs of the show and stuff like that. It's just going to be something we have to deal with for a while, but I don't think that she looks bad. And I think in general, yes, it does look improved on a technical aspect uh, and it'll look significantly better when we're watching it on Disney plus, as opposed to watching it on YouTube. Right. Right. So, yeah, uh, moving on, Spider-Man uh, freshman year. That was announced. Uh, the official images were released. What kind of what we expect from the show. Uh, some of the characters that are going to be in it. So Peter Parker, obviously, as yes, Spider-Man. 
Uh, Daredevil is supposed to make an appearance, and Charlie Cox is going to voice his, uh, his uh, that character in the show. There was some rumor that they were trying to get Tom Holland to do it, but that hasn't confirmed yet. And obviously, that's something I, I'm guessing they would have to work out with Sony to uh, have that done. But I think that's something they were working on to get Tom Holland to uh, voice that kid, uh, Peter Parker. Um, I know they had got someone else. Uh, what are they saying? They were they were. They got almost in um, what if to play uh, voice Peter Parker. So I'm not sure if they'll just stick with him um, or if they will try again extra hard to get Tom Holland. But again, so they're going to have Harry Osborn, Norman Osborn, Doctor Strange, Aunt May, and Amadeus Cho. To Amadeus Cho, um, to my knowledge, I can't. So I, I, no, I've read a lot of Spider Man, but to my knowledge, I thought he becomes the Iron Spider. But I think he also becomes something else in, in the comics, too. I can't remember on top of my head. Um, but they also, again, and they announced the villains. Um, and I would say his show becomes a, a Hulk. Is it the Hulk? Is he become? Okay. Because I thought. A, I thought a, a he, Hulk, not the Hulk, but a Hulk. No, no, correct. A Hulk. Yeah. Correct. No, I thought, I thought he. Maybe I'm thinking of like the cartoon. There was a cartoon that had him as uh, Iron Spider. And maybe they kind of diverge from the comics, and that's what I'm, maybe I'm mixing out up with. But I mean, in yeah. general, here, like the the ensemble is inspired by Spider-Man comics, but like it's not 100 percent because it's got Harry and so on. I'm sorry, I'm swatting this very annoying fly. Um, but it has Harry and, and and his villains. But there's also, like you said, it's got uh, which actually you didn't say it has Nico Minoru is uh, from the Runaways. Is going to be one of his classmates, and they he doesn't she doesn't have any association to Spider Man whatsoever. And they're just kind of throwing in, and then Amadeus show as well. You know, they could have put Glory Grant and, and Betty Brant and, and Flash Thompson, and, and maybe they are in the show, but like these other characters aren't really uh Spider Man staples, so they're just kind of going with whatever. Uh, and and that's it's fine, like, I don't really care. But in general, the the show is giving us like a version of uh, the Spider-Man's origin of the MCU, but it's not necessarily the exact one because this isn't exactly the same Spider-Man. Um, and just by example, being its freshman year, this is going to show us him getting a spider bite and show him showing us the origin of him getting his powers. But he's also going to meet Daredevil, and we don't even have Daredevil in the MCU. He's going to meet Doctor Strange, and this would be predating him meeting Doctor Strange in the MCU. So it's not the same. This like this isn't Tom Holland Spider Man from the MCU, but in a cartoon. This is just a completely separate uh, reality, if you will, of Spider Man. So it's just doing its own thing. Yeah, it, so they, they did say it's set in the MCU, but again, it could just be a different universe, like uh, like they showed in the multiverse. Right. They're doing something like that. Um, yeah, so they also showed, like, the villains. Um, now, I, some of these I recognize off the bat, and others I'm kind of, like, guessing who they might be, but it looks like it's Dr. Octopus, Bentley Whitman, as uh, a.k.a. The Wizard, um, Mark Gargan is Scorpion, uh, Dmitry Smerdyakov, uh, I always mispronounce his last name, but that's the chameleon. Uh, Alexei Sitsevich uh, is the rhino. James Sanders is Speed Demon. Milos uh, is uni the unicorn. Anton Miguel Rodriguez is the tarantula. So, yeah. That, that they showed the villains there that are expected to be in that. Uh, and again, we, we talked about Charlie Cox, who's going to play the Daredevil. Uh, they showed his costume and what it's going to look like in this comic or in the cartoon. Give you an idea. And then they also showed what Spider Man's costume will look like. Uh, again, this is him starting out. So this is kind of a thing that he put together himself. Like, looks like he takes like a hockey jersey or something and puts like some jeans or some spandex together and uh uh like puts on whatever red 
like you know scarf or like mask or whatever that he can find and then obviously he sh makes his own web shooters and webbing so those the web shooters you see on there uh, along with his webbing and things like that that he's going to be using to uh, go around being spider-man so that's his costume there um any final thoughts on on uh, freshman year before we move on yeah, the um, which we didn't have a picture of him in in the uh, in, in the villain side, but uh, as we previously mentioned, that he's going to have Harry Osborn and Norman Osborn in the show, and they are very important to the Spider-Man lore. But we haven't seen them in, in the MCU proper outside of um, uh, Willem Dafoe's from the you know the original Tobey Maguire stuff in, in No Way Home, but that wasn't the MCU version technically but uh, if i remember correctly and i could be wrong so you feel free to correct me uh but it is looking like i believe like the image of norman he looks more like a black man than he is uh, like his comic book caucasian self and i believe like if they're going in that direction you know it doesn't matter but I'm pretty excited for that, for him to, for both Norman, and I haven't seen Harry, but I believe Norman is black, and I've seen, like, uh, fan art of, like, the last year or two of Norman Osborn, like, being legitimately black just but from fan arts, and I love it, because Norman has this weird hair where it's short and wavy, and same thing with Harry, so just a lot of black people black men style that not me not today uh style their hair that way with like waves and stuff so it kind of like it lines up really perfectly for norman to just make him black and and just do that and that would be it looks really good so um i've seen some real ratchet uh norman osborne over the last year in fan art so i really enjoyed that so hopefully uh this is the direction that they're going just because i'd like to see that personally yeah, I think it is. They're, they they said Black Norman Osborn, so I think that's what I had seen. Um, it announced, and I was trying to find a picture of it. There was a picture flying around somewhere uh, online. Now we can't find it now, and it's kind of like it's really crappy. Um, I don't know. It's kind of goofy that they aren't seeing it, but I think so. Yeah, it looks like he is. He is going to be black in this in this uh, in this show. So maybe maybe they'll do the same as uh, in, in like Spider Man Four and go with a black Norman Osborn for the MCU universe side uh, because obviously the other Norman was played by. Um, Top of my head, the name. Um, Are you talking about Willem Dafoe? Willem Dafoe, Jesus, Willem Dafoe, uh, who played the Green Goblin in the original Spider-Man, uh, with Tobey Maguire. So maybe they'll change it up a little bit there. So, yeah. But anyways, moving on. MCU Phase Five. Um, they they had a picture of what phase five like the things that are coming out there and then phase six well, well i'll show phase six like let's just talk about phase five real quick while i have okay. it um so yeah we uh officially announced everything that is in phase five so phase four is what we're in right now and it's almost done phase four will end this year the last movie will be black panther 2 uh, Black Panther Wakanda forever in November. That's the end of phase four and the official first Marvel project of phase five is Ant-Man Quantumania coming out in February. And then you can see the rest of the schedule for everything coming out in the next two years. Uh, if, if everything comes out as scheduled, well, this is what you're going to be watching uh, from Marvel in the next two years. Secret Invasion on Disney Plus in the spring of next year. Then Guardians Volume 3 will be in May of 2023 with Echo on Disney Plus. Uh, in summer of 2023, Season 2 of Loki on Disney Plus also in the summer of 2023. The next Captain Marvel movie titled The Marvels will be July 28th, 2023 with uh, Fall 
Disney Plus, the Ironheart series uh, will be in, in the fall. And then the Blade movie, everyone's waiting on that, uh, which I believe they're scheduling the uh, the shooting of Blade uh, in October. So it's going to be starting production uh, shooting in October, but the movie itself will be out next November. And then we have Agatha Harkness and the Coven of Chaos was going to be winter 2023 2024 that's a disney plus show and another disney plus show daredevil born again which is basically daredevil season four uh spring of 2024 the new captain america movie with sam wilson uh captain america new world order in may 2024 so that's a big title and the last thing of phase five will be thunderbolts uh, so officially announced Thunderbolts movie, July 26, 2024. Right. Um, and then phase six, uh, they announced uh, just not as many things being announced yet for phase six, but uh, the big ones obviously being Fantastic Four, uh, Avengers King Dynasty, so uh, Fantastic Four of November 8th, 2024. Uh, Avengers to King Dynasty, May 2nd, 2025. Or is that 26? That's 25. Blurry. It's 25. And then November, in November later that year, the Avengers uh, Secret Wars comes out. So that's going to be back to back. Um, Secret Wars was being rumored for a while. Uh, a lot of, like people were kind of piecing things together on what they'll probably do for that, uh, what they might do for them, how they may bring that about. But that was kind of rumored uh, from the beginning. And I'm wondering, so I know in, C in, in the comics and in, in the Secret Wars, like Dr. Doom and Kang kind of merge and join as like make become like this really like strong like version of dr doom like a stupid strong stronger version of dr doom so i wonder if something like that's going to happen because obviously dr doom will probably be introduced by then uh which because they're releasing fantastic four in 2024 so i'm wondering if that's what they're kind of doing there like the kane dynasty like kane will lose in that and then dr doom will come in and be like you know maybe i can help you or something like that and they kind of join forces or maybe not literally become one, but somehow join forces maybe and try to uh, get into a situation like in the Secret Wars where they're taking different um, character or they kind of create this thing where they're battling a group of uh, good guys versus like the bad guys type of thing. So that'll be, that'll be interesting to see how they, how that plays out. Right, you you think it's going to be more like the 1984 or 1980s version of Secret Wars? I think it's going to be more like the 2015 version of Secret Wars, uh, where they have not necessarily Battle World, where they had all these different things. Because I think it's just going to be way too confusing for MCU fans to have 20 different realities all on one uh, world. But it'll still be more of uh, I think the events of King Dynasty will lead into incursions and lead into whatever the conflict is um, Maybe. going to cause for Secret Wars to happen. And again, Doctor Doom, which you know he will definitely have been introduced. I'll, I'll, I'll probably come back to that point later. But Doctor Doom will play because in either, either way, he's going to play a, a huge role. In Secret Wars, for sure. Um, the entire thing, though, uh, if we're, you know, if you are uh, remembering that uh, Phase One, Two, and Three from Marvel, well, you know, the beginning of Marvel from Iron Man, Iron Man Two, the Hulk, the Avengers movie, all the way through Avengers Endgame and epiloguing with Spider Man Far From Home, all of those movies for. 28 uh 2008 to 2019 is the uh infinity saga that's just the title all of all of those 20 ish movies is called the infinity saga and then this phase that we're in now phase four 
phase five and then phase six ending with the uh, secret wars movie the avengers all of those all of the properties all of the disney plus shows all together is being called the multiverse saga so again we just came out of several multiverse related things with spider-man no way home and uh dr strange multiverse of madness and also loki last year was multiverse uh we're definitely going to get more of that in loki season two uh but them specifically saying this is the multiverse saga as as we've been uh, you and i have discussed and many other people have discussed what is marvel doing what is the, the plan what is what are they trying to accomplish what stories like what are they doing we don't know are the king war this are they doing secret wars like what is it now we know what movies are doing we know what shows are doing we know the entire scope is multiverse related so now with that premise we can expect more multiverse stuff right like if you don't call it multiverse saga and only have two movies involving the multiverse right so um of these properties like of what's in secret or excuse me what's in uh phase five because we know like this is relatively definitive of what's phase five other than loki season two is definitely going to have some multiverse stuff in it but the other ones not a hundred percent sure but if i was a betting man i would bet that secret invasion would have um like daisy johnson quake might is rumored to show up in that show and that is relatively a multiverse sort of concept because she's you know avengers of shield is kind of not really mcu but it is so it would be like another reality sort of situation so having uh chloe bennett come back and reprise that role would be like a multiverse thing and then quantum mania dealing with the uh the quantum realm and all of that there could be some alternate reality stuff in there we don't know exactly what's going to happen in guardians of the galaxy but we'll talk about that shortly and then daredevil in general just him being back and being in the mcu is kind of a multiverse related thing so in the very very least we will see more multiverse stuff uh to what extent will we see it uh we don't know especially with all of these gaps here uh in phase six and there's a bunch of open projects that they clearly intend on putting stuff there um whether it be disney plus shows or additional movies uh, but what will they be exactly? We don't know, but I would expect more multiversal things to be ramping up in phase six. Right. And I wanted to, in particular, uh, focus on Daredevil. And because, again, we had talked about how Marvel might be, MC might be open to doing more um, mature audiences only shows. Um, so Daredevil Born Again is a comic by frank miller like he was part of the one of the people that did this comic and frank miller definitely does a pretty dark adult more strives towards adult comics um and so born born again um basically in the comics karen page now obviously again three faces marvel obviously mcu does kind of their own things with uh with the storyline they don't take the exact storyline from uh from the comics but basically in the comics, Karen Page, who's the former secretary of Nelson Murdoch law offices in New York, um, and one of and obviously in in the comics, and they kind of show in, in the original Daredevil series, like as, as Matt Murdock's ex-girlfriend, kind of had left left their him and and the practice earlier to pursue an acting career. Um, after a big period of success she becomes like a heroin addict and she's reduced to starring in like porn flip pornographic films um so she's kind of at, at that point she's kind of strapped for cash so she sells the information that matt murdoch is daredevil for a shot of heroin like she that's how low she gets or hot rock bottom she gets so now this information is sold upwards to like the kingpin and over like the next six months they shows kingpin essentially like dismantling Matt Murdoch's life, like IRS freezes Murdoch's accounts, 
the bank forecloses on his apartment. Uh, the police lieutenant uh, kind of testifies that he saw Matt Murdock pay a witness to like uh, perjure himself. So all these bad things are happening, and reborn is essentially him finding a way to fix his, put his life back together, and get back to uh, to top. And again, the the comic itself is kind of very, it's pretty dark. Now it's supposed to be, um, uh, as you said, an eighteen episode uh, season, which is pretty long for MCU because MCU has been the longest pretty, one. Like, yeah, easily the longest one because they've done a lot of like eight nine eight or nine episodes at most so it's interesting maybe they'll do like a part one part two uh to kind of break it up but i just again i'm guessing but again to me this has to be a mature show like it can't they can't i i would be kind of disappointed if they left it like you know pg-14 or something or or, or or like tv-14 or whatever they call it um i would i would imagine this to keep kind of somewhat in line with the comic itself, make it more of a mature audience, is, uh, in my opinion. So that'll be or worry about them making it out. more in line with the previous seasons on, on Disney. That too, yeah. Netflix well, that's those are Disney Plus, yeah. Right, and that's continuing off of those because those were for mature audiences. Um, I mean, there was just like the action, the violence um, that made it like it, it was. It would suck that if they downgraded it and took a lot of that away and kind of did some other stuff with it. But yeah. Um, any other thoughts on any of these other things? I know we want to get into the black Panther Wakanda forever tra teaser trailer. Um, yeah. Yeah. So uh, the first movie again, the black Panther is ending phase four uh, at the end of the year. And phase five is uh, starting with Ant-Man. So uh, at comic con, they did actually have a trailer that they showed um the audience is there for ant-man unfortunately it's still early the movie's not coming out until february uh in general marvel doesn't want you like watching trailers for things and not coming out till next year but there's other properties and stuff that you know black panther and she hulk they want you concentrating on that so they're not going to release those trailers uh for ant-man and they also had guardians as well they're not going to release those anytime soon so don't hold your breath however um they did show some stuff there at comic-con uh we do have official art already um like a poster art for uh ant-man quantum mania so that, again that comes out in february uh in some of the footage you know they did show one they have a new actress playing cassie lang uh uh catherine newton so she is not the same one that was in like in game and stuff and stuff like that as well as uh they do confirm that modok the character modok will appear in uh the ant the new ant-man movie and of course it's going to have jonathan majors coming back and playing a different version of kang so the last time we saw him he was he who remains and that character died in loki season two uh, but he will be full fledged Kang, the Conqueror, in Ant Man Quantum Mania. So we'll 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 get this and see him there. And uh, yeah, like I'm, and also Bill Mer Bill Murray is in this movie too. So um, we don't 100 percent know what role he's going to play. Uh, how he's supposed to be like? I think he's supposed to be like someone that uh, was in the quantum realm, like right, so, right, something right. or someone in the quantum quantum realm so somebody that like because janet remember janet van dyne was right. in the quantum realm and she was saved from there and uh, apparently she wasn't the only one so bill murray you know as you know, he was down there too so right right so um yeah it'll, it'll be interesting to see all those work out but um let, let's get into the black panther that's our final uh topic here uh, Actually, I have uh i do have a quick a clip of Guardians of the Galaxy 2. Oh, you uh, do? As okay. well, yes. So, um, Guardians of the Galaxy, again, they did show a trailer, and James Gunn's already said that it's not finished. Like, they don't have the effects and stuff. It's not ready for the internet. And again, it's not even coming out till next summer. So, no, we're not going to see a trailer on it anytime soon. But they did have the cast up there for Guardians Volume 3, uh, most of them there, um, including a new cast member, Maria Bach. Makalova for Cosmo, uh, but they also showed uh, which a name I'm not going to even try. But the guy that was in Peacemaker, 
Uh, he's also in um, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3, and he's confirmed to be the High Evolutionary. And we do have uh, a little bit of, of footage of just, just fan footage of people like sharing uh, what that was and what he looked like because he actually appeared in costume uh, and walked through the crowd. So we can real quick show that. Okay. He didn't, nobody expected him to show up like this. Can you tell how surprised I am? We can't believe it. In full regalia, too. I'm pleased to be here. As I gaze out at this crowd, I am reminded of my sole purpose in the universe to take unevolved disgusting, <laughs> low-life scum, such as yourselves, <laughs> and enhance you genetically to something less reprehensible. <laughs> Thank you for inspiring me with how vomitous you all are. The, the, the bile in the back of my throat as I look at you is all Okay, that's it. Um, but yeah, that is what it is. Karen Gillan, yes, she is Nebula. If you didn't know Nebula, uh, the Guardians of the Galaxy, and uh, yeah, uh, what's up, Matthew? How are you doing? Um, yeah, that was literally the villain of Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. Uh, again, there was footage shown there, but we don't have it um, shown because it's not an official trailer finish yet. Uh, but again, Adam Warlock is going to be in the movie, and we don't know. He, I mean, we assume eventually he'll join the Guardians, but we don't know if they're going to be like beefing for majority of the movie or just a short piece of it. But uh, we'll see that as the next summer, uh, we'll be able to dive deep into that. Right. There was also a crappy image of uh, Adam Warlock flying around on on Twitter. Um, Someone had taken like a picture from like maybe having their camera like by their leg or something and mm -hmm. kind of sneaking in a picture of the screen. It was I, w I wanted to post like give it to you, but I was like, yeah, this is really a shitty picture. I don't know how, how what value it is to show it. Um, but yeah, it's uh, it's it's going to be interesting. Like I said, uh, what they do with uh, Guardians of the Galaxy three, what characters will remain after that. I know they want to. Uh, James Gunn is saying that's his last one. Uh, Batista, Dave Batista, is no longer going to be part of MCU. Uh, he he thinks he's he's done with, uh, with his character that he that he plays. And then uh, maybe they'll like revamp who the Guardians of the Galaxy is because I know in the comics Adam Warlock is um, one of the characters in Guardians of the Galaxy three uh, Guardians of the Galaxy. So maybe he'll be in there. Um, who knows if Chris Pratt will stick around? We'll, we'll find out. Um, yeah, and Matthew, just to answer your question: Does he have an Infinity Stone? Not the MCU version, comic book version. 
you know, yes, sometimes does. he does, sometimes he doesn't, but MC version won't have the Infinity Stones because the Infinity Stones have been destroyed. So, no. Yeah, yeah. So he won't. Uh, it's funny. So, like, again, I, I, we mentioned this in the past, but the Vision essentially takes the role of Adam Warlock um, in MCU when, with, like, with the Mind Stone because uh, that's what Adam Warlock has. He has the Mind Stone. He has a Soul um, but, Stone. Is this Soul Stone? Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, my bad. So the Soul Stone, but that's what uh, that's the, the Infinity Stone that Adam Warlock has in the comics, and in here they have uh, Vision as that, so he's kind of plays that Adam Warlock role. Uh, but yeah, let let's uh, let's get into Black Panther. Um, we have the official trailer, so we'll play that really quick. This was a really fun trailer. I I liked. I like the music and the mix-up uh, mashup that they did uh, with some of these songs. But uh, let, let's go ahead and uh, pop up the trailer if, if you're ready. Speaking of which, though, uh, before we go into this trailer, two things. One, that's licensed music, so I'm going to actually... I don't know, do you want to play this trailer? Because I, I would probably have to mute it. Uh, secondly, we've already been pulled down from YouTube several times. so that's I, true. I, We can play it for the other... Uh, platforms but it would be again if i'm playing it it's going to be muted and if you're on youtube you're probably the stream will probably be shut off and then we'll come back so it's just a fair warning um do you want to play it still i mean why don't you play it on the other platforms and and leave it off of youtube i guess i can't do that it's either all or nothing oh okay um it's up i don't know it's up to you i don't mind if you play it all right so yeah, so well, it'll be muted for everyone. I'm sorry if you want to watch it again. Uh, like if you're on Facebook, you just go to YouTube and, and, and check it out. And again, YouTubers, if you're chatting on YouTube, we'll probably end up going down because this happens already a couple of times. So apologize. And then we'll be right back up as soon as uh, the trailer's over. You know, instead of uh, just having a bunch of silence for a few minutes, just talk about the trailer while it's playing. Um, we can we can do that. Like, that's Namor. We have Namor in the trailer. They're using whales as, like, submarines and, and, and war vessels and stuff. And, yeah, it's... I like the trailer. Like you said, it's got that no woman, no cry. And, again, we're not, we're not going to... Um, you know, play that, but No Woman, No Cry, the Bob Marley song of Remix, and then uh, like remade with Kendrick Lamar. We were um, with Kendrick Lamar coming in at the end, uh, mixing in the song called All Right, which is one of my favorite songs of his. Yeah. And they just kind of blended in together and it's like super dope. But I love the scene here where she's in front of the UN, uh, you know, T'Challa's mother is in front of the UN talking about how she's lost like nearly her entire family. Um, basically, Shuri's the only thing she's got left. So um, I have, I have a question that. on that though. Like, yeah. I don't know if you want to. If you're done, Go ahead. Go ahead. so she doesn't say all. She says she's lost all her family. She doesn't say I've lost almost all. She's lost all her family. Right. That's what she said. So yes. It's interesting because, like, there was that rumors that um, that you know Letitia Wright and Disney had some issues. Uh, there was issues gone going when they were making this movie. Um, and I'm wondering if they're somehow going to kill her off now. They made a suspenseful who the new Black Panther is going to be. The rumor originally was that Shuri, Shuri would become the Black Panther because she is the Black Panther in the comics at one point. Um, so I'm wondering if she's going to die in here at some point in the movie. And that scene is kind of after that, after she dies. And she's just like, you know, I've lost my entire family. 
Um, and I'm then I'm wondering, like, who the Black Panther will be. Um, I, I'm just intrigued. I, I'm 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 wondering if that's what they're going with. What are your thoughts on that? Like, do you think it's it's she didn't really mean all her family? Or yeah, I don't think she meant all her family. I mean, don't get me wrong. There's plenty of theory crafting for who the Black Panther is. I'll come back to that. But um, no, I don't think like I think she meant like, you know, her husband died and then her son died. And she's like, I lost my family just to emphasize, but not to say that she could forgot about Shuri or that Shuri died in the movie. Um, yes, those rumors are that of. Uh, they're, they're mostly rumors like obviously we don't know the full details and, and marvel will never just tell us and say oh yeah we have issues with letitia right and we don't want her they're not going to tell us that so they're just going to be rumors regardless um at the end of the day and they probably are true honestly but uh we're not going to know uh, full-on details about that so in general yeah i, I don't think there's any any anything there for me to think even despite that line the, that they're going to kill off Shuri and then have that be either what, like the end of the movie and, and then then have a Black Panther show up at the end or I, I, that feels like it's a beginning of the movie sort of thing because even at the beginning of the trailer they have everyone dressed in white so that's like for me it's implying that they're having the funeral for T'Challa uh, and that's just how they, they, they do funerals in, in Wakanda um, instead of dressing in black, but they do dress in black in the movie or in the in the trailer as well for certain scenes where they're crying. So it's more of a, it's kind of a because I, I don't know how many funerals you've been to, but some funerals I've gone to, it, they try to celebrate the life of someone you know, instead of just sit there and crying and mourning or and so on. So that's what it feels like. There is like more of like we love you, T'Challa. We miss you. Wish you were still here, but we're going to celebrate the, the great man that you were and dance and sing and 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 send you off in power. Because I believe uh, there's all this writing on the background and that's been translated by plenty of a bunch of fans. And one of the things says rest in power to Chala and, and, and so on. So I think that scene and all that stuff is some celebrating. It's still a funeral, but celebrating his life and then um, going off and then they, they mourn separately. Yeah, it'll be interesting. Like I said, I, I'm 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 guessing it will be Shuri as Black Panther, um, but I just thought that was interesting because she doesn't like she's very specific. I lost all my family, so. Um, well, here, so here's I'll the thing about that. Like, um, I mean, just just go ahead and talk about it now. Um, this photo is very deliberate to me. Like this part of the trailer. Obviously, they want people to know that there will be a Black Panther in this movie by putting this shot there. Um, and there's a lot of theory crafting, and people will. I think the safe assumption is that it's it's Shuri because Shuri was in the comics, Black Panther. Um, and I've I've seen some theories, people saying that uh, one that Shuri is going to recreate the heart shaped herb, like make an artificial version of it, because in the first movie it was all they were all burned and destroyed. Right. There aren't any more heart shaped heart shaped herbs, and that's how they get their powers, uh, the strength and agility and stuff like that. So the rumor is that she's going to create an artificial version of it, and because of the heart shaped herb, that's how they can go visit the ancestral plane, and that. Uh, Killmonger is supposed to meet her there and uh, give her advice and you know talk talk to her. So we'll see Michael possibly see Michael B. Jordan come back as Killmonger in this movie. But again, he is dead. Um, right. Whether or not he comes back as resurrected, because I've also seen another theory. I mean, just people just kind of spitballing that at the end of Black Panther one. He said, "Is let me, you know, put me at sea so I can be with my ancestors." You know, and, and and a lot of people are thinking, "Hey, what if they put his body at sea like they said, and then washes up, and the uh, the uh, Atlanteans find the body, resurrect him with their technology, and bring him back that way?" 
um, which would be cool. I mean, I'm not saying that it's happened. It's definitely, you know, it's just people spitballing, but that's just, that's something. Um, and then just in general, we've been through this rodeo before with Marvel where these, uh, trailers, these first trailers for these movies have edited scenes where what's happening right. in the movie is not what's happening in the trailer, just right. to throw you off. You know, Infinity War, Captain America getting crushed by Thanos, and there's no stones in the uh, gauntlet. And then all of a sudden, you watch a movie, he's got five stones in the gauntlet. Right. Spider Man, No Way Home, you got right. all these villains swinging in, and then one Spider Man is going to fight him. And you watch the movie, it's all three of them. So, what if this last, uh, this last frame is deliberately like, okay, we'll make them really skinny to make it look like a, a smaller person, say like a woman, like Letitia Wright, because she's a very small woman, small ankles, small wrists, and uh, small waist, and so on. And just make it seem like it's a uh, Letitia Wright, make it seem like it's Shuri, when in fact it could be someone else entirely. Like, uh, right. I know one of the r- rumors is that. It was going to be um, uh, Winston Duke because he got right. a big pay bump for um, for this movie, and he's going to have an expanded role. It could be someone else that they just haven't revealed because we didn't even know who Namor was going to be until a couple weeks ago. Right. So, right. Yeah. Uh, and and you know maybe that line is not even in the movie that what what she says that I lost my entire family I mean, like they, they've done that too where there's lines that they show and then they, they don't they're not even in the actual movie so um, obviously they they want to sh- give us a trailer and show us things but they don't want to give away the plot and a lot of what the movie is about so they they do these kind of tricks that you mentioned. Um, that's gonna be that, that. That's gonna be fun. One thing I'll I'll say I I I, I always say like I don't like to watch too many trailers, but man, I want to see more Neymar. I uh, like I like yeah, yeah, that scene yeah. when he's walking out the water. That is so cool. Like I cannot wait to see that uh, in real life. Like in that when the movie cap uh, comes out. Um, like we didn't we didn't really get to see more a lot of him. Like just very quick glimpses. Obviously that when he's in the in the ocean and he turns around. Um, we saw that, and like I said, the, another f- quick glimpse of his face when he's kind of like looking down in a sense. Um, I think we see his birth happening, um, but yeah, we don't see a lot of him. And really, we don't. While while he is going to be the antagonist in this movie, we don't really know if he's going to be like just the main antagonist. It could be something else. He could be maybe a guy that tr- starts out as a, a bad guy, but then the, towards the end, he does become a good, like, one of them. Just the way, like, uh, Winston Duke's, uh, M'Baku's character, because in the comics, M'Baku is a bad guy. The man-ape is a bad guy. But in here, obviously, uh, he joins uh, T'Challa, and, and they become, like, friends in a sense. So maybe they'll do a different route with Neymar as well. So it'll be interesting to see what happens um, with with those little bits as, as that as well. So and, yeah, and like we, oh, sorry, I was ahead. saying like you had mentioned last time, uh, I think it was last week's episode that they're doing more of Mayan, um, like traditionally, like as far as the the ethnic uh, and the like the ritual, the things that they wear, and so it's gonna be like a Mayan. Uh, um feel to it like that's what their their the atlanteans will be like so um that's that's really cool to see as well um, and i think i think they're all uh latinos uh played by latin people like all the atlantis people and, and the character uh, the, the the person that plays uh neymar he's he, he was he was very proud like he talked about it like he grew up how he grew up like in a rough neighborhood like he said so he said like i'm from the hood and to mm-hmm. see um to see me I, at this moment this is such a big moment for me and my people and for, for me to be able to play this character uh for represent my people so um that's really cool too i'm, I'm excited to see all that all right and like on the um you know sticking with namor so part of the rumors one of the rumors i heard is um that dr doom is actually pulling the strings here 
So whether or not he actually shows up in the movie is another thing. Maybe it's a post credit scene. Maybe it's uh, towards the end. I don't think he's going to be like full fledged fighting Black Panther at the end of this. But um, you know, maybe it's one of those things that it's a post credit scene. We hear a voice. Uh, we see some armor. You know, because we saw Thanos at, at right. The, you know, end of uh, Avengers. Like, but he didn't have a full appearance until really Guardians of the Galaxy. But it wasn't James. Brolin, Josh Brolin, uh, at that time, but still, like we could see Doctor Doom early on, or or know about him now, uh, but he might be pulling his strings because Doctor Doom, one of the things that he has an obsession with with Con- Wakanda is that he wants the vibranium. So, right, uh, that is a possibility. I also heard that Nakia has a son in this movie as the love okay. child between T'Challa and Nakia. Like, so there will be a, like a son of black Panther, or at least the rumor is that there will be a son, a son of black Panther in the movie. Um, I don't, I don't see that in the trailer. Maybe it could have been like something that passed over me, or it's just something an insider knows. Uh, but I did hear that as well. Yeah, and uh, yeah, they could they could tease La- Latveria too. So um, just like because that's obviously that's the way for them to bring these uh, these different characters in because they are gonna eventually get to uh, Doctor Doom. So it could be like yeah, just a complete tease just to have it dropped in there because we're what two years away from Fantastic Four. So it could make sense that could make sense mm-hmm. that they that they add that in and he's the one that's the actual bad guy that's pulling these strings and uh that's what we end up seeing in the end somehow um but yeah that's that's pretty much our show for today uh did you have any final thoughts about comic-con uh and anything else that you want to wrap up uh just a real quick um you know we didn't really talk about thunderbolts that much um, that it is a confirm like we finally have confirmed like uh, our uh, speculation that they might be doing Thunderbolts it is confirmed they are will be a Thunderbolts movie a uh, at the end of 2020 is the end of Phase Five it's the last movie of Phase Five uh, 2024 and um, we don't know who's exactly going to be on that team at the moment but it's happening and then uh, as far as the well the, Again, we're getting two Avengers movies in one year. We haven't had an Avengers movie since 2019, but we're getting two in 2025. So that's going to be interesting. And I, it kind of makes it seem like those are the only movies outside of Fantastic Four, which is 2024. But like, I think that's 2025 will be the only movies of of that year from Marvel. But you know, things can change right. at the moment. And then um, the fact that, you know, Secret Wars, again, what uh, what the, the newer Secret Wars did, and even to extent the original one, uh, once that was over, it kind of reset things. Uh, there were newer heroes and newer costumes and, and newer concepts and stuff like that. Is whether or not um, they're going to do that with this these sets of movies and reset things. Because, again, it is the multiverse saga so they can't call it that without the multiverse being involved especially if the big event is secret wars well mutants mutants because right well yeah right well will they introduce the mutants in that span they just haven't announced it yet maybe that's that's some of the miss like one of the uh, movies the movie will be introduced in 24 or 25 maybe um, as well, so we'll we'll find out. That'll be interesting for sure. Because it seems, and to your point, yeah, they could maybe do a reset and and redo MCU in general. Maybe mm-hmm. just go like maybe bring another person to play Iron Man. Um, at that point, by then maybe they recast uh, Black Panther. Um, that's it. Well, one thing as we wrap up, I do want to ask you this. Now, there's a lot of people. That have voiced their displeasure that King T'Challa is no longer there. Um, they thought. I think they asked his cousin, and and his cousin said that you know Chadwick would want the character to go on because he knew that uh, King T'Challa represents you know the 
representation again is such a big part of there's not a lot of black superheroes right so mm -hmm. having a black superhero king t'challa having him as the black panther meant a lot to people and to stop having king t'challa being prevalent in the mcu is not right and there's a lot of fans that feel that way too like i i have mixed on it like i just feel like it's so fresh that Chadwick Bosman passed away. I just feel like they shouldn't so quickly recast King T'Challa. Like I know, like people will talk about, like yeah, you know, they recast Terrence Howard to Don Cheadle, but that's different. Like, a hey, Terrence Howard didn't pass away, and he was a more of a side character too. He wasn't such a big character, so it's not as controversial. Um, but again, because of the way that Chadwick Bosman passing away, he was such a beloved person in general, not only a great actor, just a beloved person. Like you saw like a lot of things that he did uh, for people like like on the low key, like people like when he passed away, everyone started announcing, oh, this Chadwick did this for me, Chadwick did this for me, he, all these charitable things. He was paying kids uh, tuitions, all these great things that he was doing um, for for his community. Um, so I kind of, like I said, I have a mix. Like, I definitely agree that, it, that there should be a black superhero King T'Challa, like for representation. But again, just because his passing was so fresh, I feel like it would be too soon. Like, what are your thoughts on that? Well, I've been saying for years, um, and, and not relation to Chadwick Boseman, uh, and Black Panther, but in general, I've been saying for years, what Marvel should have done um is to treat marvel characters as if they are james bond and we've had so many actors play james bond like you know uh, you know i'm not even gonna go go there but like there's been multiple actors that play the exact same character it's all in the same continuity and it's been going on for 30 40 50 years why does the mcu have to have one actor play one character and when that actor is either you know out of contract doesn't want to come back or god forbid pass away like in the case of chapman does that role have to go away when the character has plenty of stories to be told and plenty of fans that want more content like we saw iron man and the last iron man movie was 2012 Right, he was still in movies up until Endgame, and Robert right. Downey decided to put put it away. But we could have just recast Iron Man, and that's the problem with just in general uh, the fandom. But if Marvel from the get go was treating it more like James Bond, treating it like Batman, there's been so many Batmans, and had multiple character or multiple actors just come in, just make sure you get a good actor and continue the role. Because even like Hulk, they not only did they recast Hulk from Edward Norton to Mark Ruffalo, they right. just referenced both uh, like in What If, they redid shots of the Incredible Hulk of Edward Norton, but they used Mark Ruffalo's version of it in What If. And then She-Hulk, they're referencing the Incredible Hulk with Edward, Horton, or Edward Norton, but they're referencing it with another uh, actor with, with Mark Ruffalo. So it's not like it's unprecedented or wrong or immoral to, in, to recast a character. Now in this case is very special. It's different because he passed away is very tragic. It's sad. And I, you know, I, I completely get it, but yeah, I absolutely wanted there to be another T'Challa because that's a very important character to me personally is very important character in general to the ongoing, like they had so much planned on like what, because of the success of black Panther, black Panther did better than infinity war in 2018, right. like it had more box office and the entire future of Marvel MCU was like, well, black Panther is going to headline the future of the MCU. And it's just going to be everyone else because Iron Man's going to retire and Captain America, it'll be black Panther at the top. And then what happened with Chadwick? So they had to restructure and it's kind of like, I don't even know who they feel is like the top dog now, but they could have kept going. And, uh, I would have rather it just been a recast, 
uh, and continue to recast so we can still have Iron Man movies and we can still have uh, Steve Rogers at least. Like I, I, I like Sam Wilson as Cap. I'm, I'm not against Black Captain America whatsoever, but in general, we don't have to let characters die just because of fan perception of one actor being in that role forever because that's not how real life works with real you know with actors and and contracts and uh just entertainment that's just not how that works right right so yeah it's an interesting conversation and I, i think eventually they will do something where they bring in uh, a new King T'Challa. I don't. I don't know. We'll see exactly what they're doing in this movie. I know they're showing a memorial and stuff of him being gone, but who knows? Maybe what exactly what they'll show happens to him um, in the MCU. But uh, yeah, that's a wrap for today's show. Uh, obviously, thank you again for everyone that's tuned in. Tuned in, Cliff, uh, Q, uh, Matthew. Uh, Muck Muck, everyone that joins in and participates on our uh, on our nightly or every weekly um, chat. And sorry again for all the the blackouts on YouTube. We we I know we have to be more weary of how many clips we're playing because uh, they do YouTube is very strict on those things. But yeah, check out all like I said, everything that you do, uh, everything that we do on the Barroom Network. We're covering Chicago sports and. Also, if you guys have missed any past episodes of our show as well, uh, you can check them out on audio platform on any podcast provider that you may get and also on YouTube. But, yeah, that's all for tonight. Uh, Thank you again for tuning in. And, yes, please uh, smash those uh, like buttons for us as well. Uh, But that's for it for uh, all of us tonight. You have a good one. Thanks, guys. Have a good night.